the truth is never linear. This is the main motivation for uh, opening this chapter in which we move from linear models, and we have learned a lot about them, uh, to models that are able to capture uh, the nonlinear dependencies in the data. And in most cases, as a matter of fact, reality is uh, nonlinear. And, and therefore, although uh, linear models uh, are very convenient because they are easy to estimate and also uh, there is uh, ease of interpretation, uh, nevertheless, uh, we need uh, more uh, flexible models uh, in order to account uh, for uh, our real data. Okay, almost never, let's say. Okay, in some cases it might be linear, but we, we must be prepared to deal with nonlinear phenomena. Uh, we, we, we know that uh, linear models uh, are, uh, have a, a, a lot of, uh, of pros, uh, but uh, when a linearity assumption is not, uh, is not good enough, we should uh, use other models. And uh, here it is uh, uh, the, the, the place where we learn and introduce some of them. So we will speak about polynomials, step functions, splines, local regression, and also a few words on the generalized uh, additive models. All these models offer a, a lot of flexibility and uh, most important, they don't lose much uh, of the uh, interpretability of, uh, of linear models. But let's start uh, with a, a classical uh, approach uh, that is polynomial regression. So the idea is that uh, I have uh, my data and uh, I start from a very, very simple uh, problem where I, I just have uh, uh, an x and uh, one single x variable, uh, one predictor, and one single y variable, the, 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 the dependent variable, the, the, the effect, the target. So here I have wage against age, okay? And uh, okay, this is a nice example. Here you can see the scatter plot uh, uh, of the data. Uh, it is also easy to see that uh, uh, there are two clusters. So there are those that have a very, very high wage. And by the way, it seems that this is not affected very much by their age. And uh, uh, below, we have most of people whose wages are not that high. And here you can see that a linear model would not be enough. So we are trying with a polynomial model. So the idea is that if we have to explain the width, uh, the, the height y data datum, then we, we are going to use a polynomial function of x. So if we want to explain the, the response here, we will take a polynomial function of the independent variable x. And here you can see you can take a polynomial of the order you like. Here in the plot, uh, the, the estimate was made by degree 4 polynomial. And uh, you can use uh, polynomials also for um, logistic regression. So in this case, this is a classification problem. So uh, the same data, they, they were divided in two classes and precisely uh, the point was to predict that the wage was greater than 250. So uh, we are interested in understanding what's the probability of uh, being uh, in the upper class of wage. And uh, uh, here we have a plot, and uh, depending on age, here you can see the cases. Each little bar is a case. These are the cases where wage is greater than 250, so that these are the rich ones. And these are the cases when wage is less than 250. And uh, you can solve this by logistic regression. And we know logistic regression made uh, using uh, uh, linear uh, linear dependence, and you can introduce uh, polynomials also in that, and in this case you could obtain something like this. So, and, and this is interesting because here you can see that not only you you get your nonlinear function, okay, in here uh, this function is giving you the probability 
of wage being greater than 250 given the age and and so depending on the value of this probability then you will be able to decide whether your point should go into class uh, zero low wage or class one high wage but in um, in addition to the curve you can see that in both cases we have confidence bands and these confidence bands are quite interesting because they get larger as you move uh, to the borders so uh, where you have a lot of data they are quite narrow here not so narrow but anyway uh, more narrow than uh, in a, in the final part but here when you 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 have few data and also here where you you have few data to decide uh, if uh, given a certain value of x given a very uh, lar high, large large uh, number for the age you, what, what, if you are in the, the rich or in the middle class and uh, okay in this case you do not have enough information and your confidence band is going to to get really really wide which is a, a useful information of course because it tells you that you should not trust too much uh, this uh, prediction that is provided by the model and also here you can see that the confidence band is is getting is getting larger but how can we uh, perform polynomial regression is this going to be uh, a much harder task than linear regression uh, as a matter of fact after all this is a nonlinear function so before we had a very simple relationship uh, with the uh, the response depending linearly on the predictors and in this case we want a more complex function with a polynomial that could be also uh, of relatively high order as a matter of fact it is not difficult it is not difficult because there is a, um, an easy trick uh, that is i consider new variables uh, that are just the variable uh, uh, i'm using as a predictor and its powers so I take x1 equal to x, and this is nothing new, but then I take x2 equal to the square to x squared, and I will take x3 equal to uh, x to the third power, and, and so on. And after doing that, you can go on and just uh, uh, proceed using multiple linear regression. Uh, we will see something more in detail in a few minutes, but no, no problem at all. So it's, it comes... Uh, Oh, almost for nothing, I, I, I should say. You, you do not need to learn anything more than uh, you already knew. And uh, as a matter of fact, the coefficients are not that interesting. So uh, I, I don't care about the coefficients for the coefficient for x to the fourth power, for instance. Uh, what I'm interested in are the predictions. So I would like to know what's the value of the fitted function at some point, uh, generic point, uh, x0. X uh, the, the formula of my predictor, if I'm using a fourth order polynomial, is, is given here, of course. And, uh, okay, and here there is another interesting point. If you look at this formula, you can see that uh, this is nonlinear as a function of x, of x0, but this should not be uh, a trouble for us, because after all, we knew we know the values of x so if we want to predict f of x in some x0 then this is a, an information that it is given so i can compute all the powers that i need and uh, the real point is that this prediction is a linear function of the beta hat being a linear function of beta hat means that we can compute quite easily the variance of f hat and uh, i will show how uh, in uh, in a few minutes uh, because this is a linear function of the vector beta and uh, as uh, as such uh, the variance of the of a linear transformation is easily obtained once i have the the variance of f hat then i'm able uh, by adding some assumption for instance on the uh, normality of the measurement errors in my model if i add some normality assumption i can compute uh, Confidence, uh, confidence intervals, and in particular, we'll be able to compute these bands that are f hat plus minus about 
twice the standard error of f hat. And uh, uh, what we have seen before, what we have seen before, were just these confidence bands. So here you have f hat, and this is uh, the, the dashed line, f hat plus twice its standard error. And this is f hat minus twice its standard error. We will also learn that uh, rather than exactly twice, two times, should be 1.96, but this does not going to make uh, much, uh, much difference. And uh, okay, this is a really, this is a really good point. And to compute this, you need the covariance matrix of beta hat. But this is an information that you obtain quite easily from your ordinary least squares uh, solver. Okay. Uh, a point that remains open is the choice of the degree of the polynomial. So uh, if we know the degree of the polynomial, we can proceed, of course. If we have to decide the order, we should treat this as a tuning parameter and decide the value, for instance, by cross-validation or um, k-fold cross-validation. Okay. But let's, uh, let's see in, in some more detail how we can work out a solution for polynomial regression and in particular how we can obtain confidence bands for the, uh, predicted, fun for, for the predicted regression function. Uh, I will use as an example a cubic polynomial. Therefore, my f hat is given by this expression. The idea is that I'm starting from points in the xy plane. These points are the yellow crosses. And I want to fit a cubic polynomial going through these points that I call f hat. OK. And uh, OK, this seems uh, something that is uh, uh, really nonlinear. Uh, this is the plot of a cubic, uh, of a possible cubic polynomial. And of course, this is nonlinear. You can see that nonlinearity is apparent also here, where you have uh, x0 squared and x0, x0 cubed. Uh, but nonlinearity is only appearance uh, as far as uh, we are interested uh, in the estimation, because uh, the, 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 the a x values are given for us. So as a matter of fact, the, the, the important uh, uh, dependence is that on beta. So if uh, the predictor is a linear function of beta, this is going to uh, make all very easy, as we, we will see. And here, as a matter of fact, you can see that this is, is just a linear function of, uh, of beta. Okay, so assume that these are our training data, so the pairs x, y, y, i, these are n data. Uh, okay, here we are not assuming that xi is a vector, it could be, but uh, uh, at this point uh, we are just focusing on the simple case uh, where uh, uh, xi uh, is a scalar. So our model is this one. So the idea is that we assume that there is a cubic uh, uh, function underlying my data plus some error, and the predictor, of course, uh, will be a cubic polynomial with the coefficients beta 0 hat, beta 1 hat, that I have to estimate from the data. Uh, we, are, we are using a least squares criterion. Here there is beta 2 that is missing. There is, of course, a fourth parameter uh, that I forgot. And uh, I'm going to find the beta vector by minimizing the residual sum of squares. So uh, I'm taking the, 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 the squares of the differences between the observed data and uh, their predicted values. If I replace y hat i by uh, the, the formula for the prediction, I get this formula. And as you can see, this is a scalar fun function of beta 0 hat, beta 1, hat, and so on, and therefore you can perform a minimization problem uh, looking for the vector beta hat that's going, that it's going to minimize this RSS uh, criterion. Okay, uh, it is convenient to, to, to give all this a matrix formulation, so we define some va vectors, vector y, vector y hat, uh, also the vector of, of the noises, uh, of the disturbances, and the matrix x. The matrix x, if you look at this expression, but better 
uh, also to this one, you can see that the matrix X is the one that has to be multiplied by beta, and therefore you have a column of ones, a columns of X1, X2, X3, a columns of X1 to the X1 squared, X2 squared, and the columns of the third powers of X1, X2, and 3 and so on. So, uh, sorry. Here we are. Okay, so this is our matrix X. So instead of having different predictors, I just have the same predictor but with different powers. And if I'm going to use a fourth order polynomial, matrix X will be very similar. We will just have a, f a fifth column where you have X1 to the fourth, X2 to the fourth, and so on. Uh, provided that I've defined this matrix, this is an N times four, sorry, four, because the columns are four. Uh, once I've defined this uh, N times four matrix, I can rewrite my model in this way, and I can rewrite the predictor in this way. Uh, then the residual sum of squares can also be written as the squared norm of the difference between the two vectors y, the observation, and y hat, the, the predictions. And if x is full rank, which uh, well, in, will in generally will, will, will be, unless uh, you have a strange, strange choice uh, of, of the x, uh, of the xi, uh, this means that the determinant, uh, this determinant is different from zero, then the residual sum of squares will be minimized by the usual formula. So uh, we are doing something which is, computationally speaking, completely equivalent uh, to uh, the usual linear multiple linear regression that we we have been using so far. The number of parameters, of course, are the three coefficients uh, of the powers uh, of that multiply x uh, x squared and x cubed uh, plus one, which is the intercept. Hey, okay, now uh, I had promised that uh, I would have explained something about uh, the confidence intervals. And uh, of course, you cannot get confidence intervals if you do not introduce a statistical model. So our statistical model will be that the data are generated by a true parameter vector. Uh, so we have X beta plus an error term where epsilon, the error vector, is a, jo a vector of jointly normal random variables independent of each other with the variance matrix equal to sigma square uh, identity. Okay, uh, with this assumption, uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume that sigma square is known, but we have already discussed how sigma squared could be estimated from the data. Uh, but now we, we, for simplicity, assume that it is known. Under all these assumptions, we have that uh, the expected value of beta 8 is equal to beta, so it is an unbiased estimator, and the variance of beta 8 that we denote by sigma beta 8 is given by this expression. So uh, when I'm performing uh, my performing linear regression uh, to solve the polynomial regression problem, I can just get very easily uh, the value of the variance for the parameter vector. So since the parameter vector is a four uh, by one vector, there are four entries, this will be a four by four uh, symmetric matrix. And uh, uh, in particular, if uh, epsilon is Gaussian, uh, everything uh, is linear here. So also beta hat depends linearly on, on epsilon and therefore it is Gaussian as well. So it is a, a Gaussian vector with expectation equal to beta and variance matrix equal to sigma beta hat. So now the question is how can we uh, exploit this information to get pointwise confidence bands for the prediction of the function f? Because after all, uh, we, we we don't care too much uh, the coefficients of the polynomials, uh, the polynomial, as I said. We, we rather are concerned with giving good estimates and assessing their uncertainty, good estimates for f. So uh, our point is getting confidence bands for f hat. How can we do? 
All right, it is not difficult. Uh, recall that f hat of x0, x0 is any point uh, uh, on the x-axis, so it is a generic point. This f hat can be re rewritten in this way. This beta hat is the 4 by 1 vector, and here I take 1, x0, x0 squared, x0 cubed. And so I have this vector, this is a row vector, that I call h of x, x0. Now, let's summarize. The expected value of f hat is h in x0, beta, and uh, by recalling my assumption on the way the data were uh, generated, uh, the expected value coincides with the true function I'm looking for. Uh, as for the variance, uh, I, I call the variance of f hat as a sigma square f hat. Uh, this variance will be the variance of h x0 beta hat. And by a known property, if I have the variance of a matrix uh, vector product, I have the matrix, the covariance matrix of the vector, and then the matrix transposed. And so this is it. And uh, in place of a variance of beta hat, I will plug in the sigma beta hat that I've computed before. Uh, I've shown you the formula a, a few seconds ago. Uh, now we are ready. So if uh, epsilon is normally distributed with variance sigma square identity, then we, are, we have found that f hat is also normally distributed with expectation equal to the true function and with some variance that we call sigma square f hat. Now, given this information, it is quite trivial to get the confidence band. This is a puntual um, confidence, pointwise, sorry, this is a pointwise confidence band, so we are just considering what's happening at the single value of x. And uh, therefore, we will plot our estimated function f hat of x0 plus, one point, plus minus 1.96 times the standard error for f hat. This standard deviation being the standard deviation of an estimated quantity is also called the standard error. And so we get what was written in the slides, uh, that we have our estimate. And here, here we have confidence bands that are just f hat plus twice the, sigma, the standard error. Uh, I will approximate 1.96 by, by 2. Okay, and, and the same here where there is the lower, the lower uh, uh, limit. Okay, and uh, in most cases, it, it will happen that when you do the, do the computation, uh, these uh, confidence levels, uh, confidence intervals, get wider uh, towards the end. And this is quite natural because while uh, the estimate here is usually based on many data, when you are building or estimate uh, at the beginning or, or at the end of your data set, then it will be, ha it will it will happen that you have fewer data that you can exploit in order to get a reliable estimate. So these were some technical details that I think uh, are, are useful. And uh, we, 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 we can go on with our details. And the second point is about logistic regression that uh, can be um, addressed in much the same way. Uh, for example, in the figure, this kind of logistic regression was uh, was used. So uh, within the logit function, you are just putting uh, your polynomial, uh, polyno your polynomial. And uh, again, it is important to have confidence uh, intervals. And uh, here you should. Uh, uh, be careful that uh, your confidence intervals should first uh, be computed on the logit scale. So you are working uh, exactly as I have been doing a few minutes ago for the regression problem. So I exploit the variance matrix, the parameters. I exploit the fact that uh, this uh, linear combination is a linear function of beta in order uh, to compute uh, lower and upper confidence limits for it. And when I get the limits in the logit scale, then I invert them to get the limits in the probability scale. So the idea is that I'm doing something practically identical to what I've explained for the cubic uh, regression, for the 
uh, degree three uh, um, polynomial regression, but in the end I need a further step by in which I invert the logit uh, the logit uh, transformation in order to get intervals also for the probability estimate and these limits I'm going back just a moment these limits are these ones uh, well this is seems very bad but uh, as observed by Hasti Tib Shirani here the scale is 0 0.2 so if you had plotted uh, from 0 starting from 0 and arriving at 1 it might be that this very large interval would not look so awful Okay, mm. uh, let, let's now see a, a, an alternative, an alternative to polynomials, uh, and this is an alternative that is uh, more local. So uh, polynomials are fine for, for many, many purposes, but there is an issue. An issue is that they tend to uh, be oscillating uh, at the extremes. So uh, they are not reliable uh, for extrapolations that happen outside uh, the, the range of the data. But also when you are uh, in the last part of the valuable data, uh, all the, the, their behavior uh, could, could be quite uh, oscillating. So uh, it's not clear whether polynomials are always uh, uh, the best solution and as a matter of fact we will learn that uh, there are more uh, sense there are some sensible alternatives to polynomials and uh, therefore uh, looking for something that is more stable we can consider step functions uh, what, what's the idea the idea is that that i develop a piecewise model uh, for instance here we have the, the uh, the scatter plot between uh, of wage against age, and uh, instead of trying to fit a unique function, I just consider three three constant uh, three constant models. So the idea is that uh, for a certain range of age, I'm just looking for the average wage, and uh, so uh, basically this is done by cutting the variable into distinct regions in this particular case we have a, a first region that is uh, x less than 35 a second region with uh, x between 35 and 50 and the third region uh, which is uh, x greater than uh, or equal to 65 uh, and you can do the same in regression uh, but also in uh, in classification so this is what uh, it will happen in regression this is what will be, will will happen in uh, uh, in classification okay uh, it, it, it could seem uh, uh, somehow simplistic uh, to simple solution but as a matter of fact it works uh, somehow well uh, it is easy to to have an interpretation of your results and uh, uh, you can also manage uh, interactions in a quite natural natural way for instance if you believe that there is some interaction between year and age you could consider as regressors as predictors uh, these products this is the indicator function of years less than 2005 what's an indicator function it is a, a function that is equal to one uh, when uh, its argument is true so whenever the year I'm considering is less than 2005, this indicator function will take value 1. And on the contrary, here will take value 0 when it is greater than or equal to 2005. Uh, by introducing these predictors, I am accounting for the interaction between age and, uh, and year. Okay? And uh, so it is a matter of fact as uh, if I had uh, two regressions, once for a year less than 2005 and another for a year greater than or equal to uh, 2005. Uh, this can be done uh, in R, the statistical problem, with some comments that we are not to comment because I think we are not working with R. Uh, a point, but this is easy to understand, that becomes critical, is that of uh, selecting 
the knots, the points in where you are, uh, the, the, the places, the axes, where you are splitting, in some sense, your estimation problem. So here, uh, I am deciding that 2005 is an important year, but if I had to introduce knots uh, on different years, how can I decide what are the years uh, where I, I, I should uh, introduce a breakpoint? Okay, and uh, uh, it happens, as a matter of fact, that there are uh, more robust uh, uh, techniques to handle this, uh, this, this issue, and these techniques uh, uh, avoid uh, uh, splitting just uh, uh, your uh, independent, uh, independent variable into uh, subsets. Uh, and uh, another solution, another possible solution, is uh, uh, resorting to piecewise uh, polynomials. Instead of a single polynomial over the whole domain, and we have seen that uh, uh, polynomials can have uh, quite bad uh, extrapolation properties, they tend to be wiggly when you ex extrapolate, and in general high order polynomials are dangerous because uh, you, you know that uh, uh, a polynomial of order n has a at least, uh, uh, when you, you, you take its derivative, you will have a polynomial of order n minus 1, and it will have at least n minus 1 roots. Now, some roots could be complex, but as a matter of fact, a high order polynomial has a derivative uh, that uh, is equal to 0 many times, and this means that it has a number of maxima and minima. Uh, very likely that we will have a, a certain a number also not small of maximum and minima and this is coherent uh, with a, 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 a wiggly profile that uh, might be completely unsatisfactory. So, but there is a, another idea which is a quite uh, some analo analogy with the, the, the piecewise uh, uh, technique we have just seen and the idea is uh, instead of a single polynomial Let's use uh, different polynomials, one in each region. So we introduce also in this case knots, and we split the, the, the x domain into subregions, and in each subregion we use a different polynomial. The idea is that polynomials are more safe if the order is, uh, if the, the degree is small, but if I take a low degree polynomial to explain all my data, that will be not flexible enough. But locally, a low order polynomial could do very well. So the idea is that I split my x domain into subsets so that within each subset I'm going to use a low order polynomial. So in this case, for instance, I will use a cubic polynomial if xi less less than c, and then I will use a different cubic polynomial if xi is greater than or equal to, to, to c. Okay, but is this okay? Let's see. The example is given here in this plot, and you can see that it's not uh, that good, because, okay, the, the, the fitting of the data is not bad, both uh, here when age is less than 50, and also here when age is greater than or equal to 50, but this discontinuity is, is, is it's not good to see, so you, you wouldn't like to have a model that has a discontinuity uh, at the age of 50. So there is no, 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 no comprehensible region, uh, reason uh, to, to have that, uh, that, um, that jump, okay, that discontinuity. So we would like something different, and uh, you, 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 you can see that, for instance, here I have two cubic polynomials, but there is no constraint that they will have a point in common uh, here in correspondence of the knot. Here you ha we have a, a piecewise cu cubic polynomial, so we have two polynomials that are cubic, but we are introducing the constraint that they have to be equal in, in this point. So there is a, 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 the, the, a border. So on the border, the, the two polynomials should take uh, the, the same value. And okay, this is better, but still I, I don't understand, I don't like the discontinuity in the derivative. So uh, another choice 
is to resort to spline functions. Spline functions are piecewise polynomial functions that have a number of constraints in correspondence of the knots, so as to guarantee that the function is continuous up to some degree. So this is a linear spline which is continuous up to degree zero. So the only guarantee that you are giving is that uh, you do not have discontinuities and uh, in, the, in, the, in the regions uh, the function is a linear one. So here you have linear functions that are connected and nothing else. This is a cubic spline. In this case you have cubic uh, polynomials, but you are uh, constraining them uh, to have the same value, the same first derivative and the same second derivative in correspondence of the so-called knots. And it seems very, very promising as a, as, a, as, a matter, as a matter of fact. But we can stop here at this point.